Good day, everyone. You're watching Macroca Enterprises. We are going to be discussing on lightning protection. Lightning protection. So, what is lightning? Lightning is um, a giant spark of electricity in the atmosphere between clouds, the air, or the ground. So I'll take it back again. Lightning is a giant spark of electricity in the atmosphere between clouds, the air, or the ground. So lightning is a natural phenomenon that we know formed by electrostatic discharge or discharges, which reveals itself through thunder or light sparks through the atmosphere between two electrically charged regions, either both in the atmosphere or in the atmosphere and one on the ground. For our safety, stay away from metals or things that can conduct electricity. It, it's estimated to carry one billion volts of electricity. This is what is estimated when we have lightning so we have to make sure that we stay away from metals which might conduct electricity because like um, researchers have done and they found out that it is estimated to carry about 1 billion volts of electricity. So we have to stay away from metals when there is lightning. So as you can see, it is a picture of lightning. These are all sparks, as you can see. Lightning strikes. So we now move it to lightning strikes, which contains an intense amount of heat and current that can easily damage building structure, equipment, and other projects. So this is very important. So we get to understand what is lightning, and then we we'll move now to lightning strikes, which contains an intense amount of heat and current that can easily damage buildings, structure, equipments, and other projects, and even uh, have an impact or an issue to do with the inhabitants in that building. So we have to make sure that we follow or take into consideration some measures in order to prevent the lightning strikes in our buildings or in our projects. Some common causes of lightning to the body which can cause muscle pains, broken bones, cardiac arrest, confusion, hearing loss, burns, behavioral changes, and et cetera. Now we move to lightning protection. So we've understood what is lightning, and then we've understood as well what is lightning strike. So now we move to what is lightning protection. So after understanding what is lightning, what are the things that lightning can do to us in our building? Now we now start looking at how we can, the different measures that we can put in place in order to prevent our building from lightning. So now what is lightning protection? What is lightning protection? It's the act of protecting the building, electrical systems and occupants from lightning strike. So if there's a lightning strike, like we saw, it will protect the building, the electrical systems, as well as the occupants from lightning strike. So we have to make sure that we provide lightning protection in our buildings before energizing any equipment or probably before making sure that the different equipments are light. This is very important. As you can see here, this is a picture which shows lightning and then how it strikes and gets to the building. If the building is not uh, uh, provided with the lightning protection or not properly provided with the proper lightning protection, it will be damaged or will damage the building. As you can see here, you see this, this is a cloud as well as we have a building. So if the lightning now leaves from the cloud, what happens is it gets to the building, 
we have our light our lightning rod so it gets to the lightning rod and then moves to the ground safely so once we've done certain calculations done um testings to ensure that the values that we have meets with the standard of the country or probably meets to the standard of the project by so doing we know a lightning protection system which we've installed in that building is correct and it's fit for use as you can see here we have a lightning rod which has been installed and then we have our earth tape as well which has been rolled around the building and then connect to the lightning rod and then moves to the ground as you can see here on this other picture we have it now moving to the ground and then we have our earth electrodes which are all connected to the ground we have our copper tape then connecting to the lightning rod which is installed above the building so these are the different materials which we use in carrying out lightning protection so we'll start by a straightway tape clamp as you can see and then we have a rod to tape clamp this is it as you can see we have a square tape clamp and then we have on the side our copper tape this is a copper tape we have an head bar which is for sure we are going to be needing an head bar whereby we connect from the ground and then connect to the head bar from the head bar now goes to the top roof where we install our lightning protection rod and then we have our head pit This is a typical example of a lightning protection system that has been installed in the building, as you can see. We have this graphic as well, this picture as well, which also demonstrates how lightning systems are being connected on our buildings. So, um, our references to IEC. 6235 part 3, which if you go through this uh, regulation of the International Electrical Technical Commission, you're going to see exactly everything that has to do with the lightning protection and also to perform different or certain calculations to know exactly how many rods are required for that building in order to prevent that building from lightning strike or from lightning. So now take us to QCS 2014, section 21, part 21. So we'll move straight away to the quality assurance, which is design criteria. The lightning protection system shall be in accordance with the Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation rules and regulations. So submitters, we have to make sure that we submit a detailed shop drawing while before commencing with the project so that we submit for review and approval prior to proceeding with the lightning protection. Submit full technical details and conductor size calculation of each type of cable or wire proposed. Submit exact route of each cable or wire proposed. Like I said, this is all about submittal or submission of shop drawing, which we are going to make sure that we, we show on the shop drawing the different routines, the cable sizes, the, the different conductor sizes, which we've, we, we are going to be using for the lightning protection as well as making sure that we provide technical details for the different um, materials which we are going to be using for the lightning protection. Materials, products used in the lightning protection system shall be copper or an approved copper alloy. It is very important. So we have to make sure that we strictly follow the code unless otherwise specified and specifically manufactured for that purpose or for the purpose. Air termination conductors and down conductors. So we we'll move to the first point, which is lightning air terminals and down conductors for lightning air terminals shall be provided as indicated on the drawing. So we have to make sure that we strictly follow the drawing. Where vertical air terminations are used, they shall be minimum of 15 millimeter diameter tint copper air termination rod 0 0.8 meter so we have to make sure that we strictly follow the code or the rules if we will find that it is 
we have deviation or probably we, we have proposal to do to make as far as the installation is concerned, we have to make sure that we come we, we confirm with the engineer in charge so that we proceed with the required sizes or probably the materials which we want to use or proposing for the lightning protection. Generally roof, generally roof conductors and down conductors shall be PVC shattered three times. Copper tip PVC color to be approved by the engineer. Air termination rods shall be securely anchored and welded. Down conductor shall be shall be run along the outer surface of wall or column of the building. So we now move straight to get to main and loops. So we have 25 times 3 millimeter thin copper tape, unless otherwise indicated on the project drawings or specification. Earth electrodes shall be of the earth rod type. Earth rod electrode should be 16 mm in diameter, steel copper, steel core copper jacketed type comprising a high strength steel alloy, alloy core core with a molten welded copper covering, minimum 0.25 millimeter thick is very important, to be not less than 3.6 meter long or 1.2 meters sections coupled by strong bronze couplers. And connectors shall connect shall connection of rod electrodes bolted type removable head links so we have to provide this to comprise a bolted copper link fixed on porcelain insulators and complete with stops knots and washers to take the head tape and bolted lock adequately sized for the final connection of the head electrode. So move now to installation. We move now to we move now to installation. A removable head links we have to make sure that we provide fixed in every main head lead to enable the electrode system to be connected to for testing is very important. So where we, we want to carry out maintenance or probably want to carry out the installation work itself, we have to make sure that we provide a means of disconnection link so that when we, we, we are doing maintenance, we'll be able to access or disconnect that which is moving to the ground and that which is moving to the copper tip, which goes above the building. Install an accessible position. Install in an accessible position above ground as close as possible to the earth electrode. So move now to the earth rod electrodes. Extendable, extend, extensible rods of the same diameter shall be installed in holes drilled into the ground. If ground condition permits rods, may be driven into the ground either manually or mechanically. The earth electrode shall be installed as such a depth that penetrates or that it penetrates the summer water table by a minimum of two meters. Shall, under no circumstances shall lightning, elect, lightning protection electrodes be connected to any Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation adding electrode. A minimum distance of seven point of seven meters shall be provided between any lightning at electrode and a Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation at electrode. This is very important. So while we are carrying out our at electrode or our lightning um, electrode, we have to make sure that we keep a distance of 
a minimum distance of seven meters away from a Qatar General Electric and Water Corporation at electrode or any other at electrode which we are using for the building, we have to make sure that we keep a distance of minimum, which is a minimum of seven meters away from the lightning protection electrode. Now we'll move to testing. The first point, testing acting systems by the by the F mega test or the F mega tester. The resistance of any point or any one point in the lightning protection at continuity system to the main at electrode shall not exceed 10 ohms. This is very important. So we have to make sure that we strictly follow the code. What the code says, we have to follow it. Unless allowed otherwise by the Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation without taking account of any bonding to other services is very important. So we have to make sure that we don't take it to any bonding with other services. Install additional add electrode in parallel if these figures are not met. So if we are not able to achieve the value as stated by the code or by QCS 2014 section 21 part 21, we have to make sure that we install additional add electrode in parallel to make sure that we meet with the satisfied value by the code is very important. Till then, you're watching Macobi Enterprises.